Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome back to the Blessed Girl Summer Podcast, where we learn to live, love, and grow. I am so excited. I always am excited. I feel like I say that phrase all the time when I have a new guest on, but I love conversation. I love connecting with my ladies, or it may be a gent, so let's not, I'm not gonna... Um, I'm not going to box myself in, but I'm super excited to have my girl Daniela Young here with us today as we're continuing our topic on soul care and self-care. Daniela, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for asking me to be a part. I'm really pumped to be here. So I love it. I'm I'm excited too, because you know I'll be following you on um on Instagram and <laughs> Yes. How can I get one? So I love, um, I love the things that you present. I'd love for you to share a little bit about yourself with the audience. They can get to know you a little bit better. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Danella, uh, and I am, um, I am just, I'm the area director of sales for uh, Hilton and Marriott. Um, and I, she has been doing that in the hospitality space for probably over 10 years. I am a wife. I've been married going into eight years to my, I guess, child. sweetheart. We met when we were 10 years old and he told me he was going to marry me. And I'm like, yeah, right. And here we are. <laughs> and here we are. Um, I am a New York native, but I was but raised I in the South. I've been in North Carolina for uh, a little while now. So I am um, a singer. And I have released some musical projects. I have a Christmas project and I have a single out. Um, I love the um, Fantasia said I love designs. I love Instagram. I love putting everything together and making a really pretty story. So that, that's kind of me. <laughs> I love the way she said that. She definitely, like, you, you said, I love putting together a pretty story. Yes. I and do. I think, I think that's exactly what I feel. Like, that is so. So pretty. I'll be like, can I come? <laughs> I love doing that. I love putting together things that just look good, that feel good, that, you know, just make your your followers or your audience just like, wow, where are you? Can I, you know, like you said, can I go? What are you doing? And something that's it's a great hobby. I just love doing it. So, yeah, I'm sure we're going to dive more into that a little bit today as we're talking about, um, soul care and um, how important that is to be able to integrate that in your everyday living. And we've been doing this series, but I feel like the Lord laid this series on my heart because it can be so difficult for us to find spaces um, for belonging, like where we belong, where we feel safe, where we feel free, where we feel comfortable, where we feel like ourselves. And I think that's also a part of soul care, like creating environments and spaces for ourselves because, you know, the world will not always do it. All right. <laughs> true. How about that? Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I, I, I've been asking everyone that has been on the show um, if there was a moment in time or something that they experienced that really helped them jumpstart their, their soul care and self-care journey. Um, and I'd love to ask the same question of you. Um, has there been anything or any time that you've maybe experienced um, the opposite of um, of wellness or wholeness in your life? Absolutely. Um, I was thinking about this question um, and I actually, in 2014, my dad passed away suddenly. And so we're coming up on 10 years of that uh, this December. And he actually passed away uh, a week before Christmas, and we buried him two days before Christmas. Um, so I think that was the start of when I, my whole world was turned upside down. And I had to really collect myself and figure out, what is all of this for? I feel like when someone dies, but especially a parent, or you, a piece of you dies, and you're just trying to figure out, like, what is this? Like, what? why am I still doing this? You know, what am I, um, you know, what am I doing all this for? What does this all matter? And I remember going into therapy shortly after we died, trying to put the pieces together and figure out how am I going to grieve but still live? How am I going to, like, do day to day? Nothing seemed to matter anymore. I'm like, what's the point of going to work? What's the point of following my dream? Did 
the one person that I wanted to share it with wouldn't be there, you know, like all the dream. And that's what she, I went to um, therapy and I had a Christian therapist and she was so great and kind of walked me through everything. And she was like, you're not just grieving your father, but you're grieving all the dreams that you had with him and for him. Never walking me down the aisle, never being able to see my kids, you know, never being able to be a grandpa. All the things that we planned had all died with him. And so that was the that was the moment where I'm like, I gotta figure out something because I'm not gonna be able to make it or survive with this grief and these dead dreams. And how do I put this all together and figure out how to live well? So I would say that you know, and and being this ten year anniversary coming up, um, that's where my headspace is at for sure right now. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> so first of all, you are a phenomenal storyteller. You, like I'm thinking, like the questions I'm thinking, you've hit them. <laughs> I love that about you because you 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 paint a really good picture, girl. That goes back to the the Instagram story. <laughs> like, you're really good at that. Um, but you paint a really good picture of what that experience was like, and from someone who <laughs> lost their father when I was six years old, and and did not do well. I was six, right? Yeah. But, but even as an adult, like I'm just beginning that process of yeah. what of what you've done and even just really understanding that you're not just grieving the loss of the person and the experiences of the past, but the experiences that um, you had hoped for in the right. future. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like, you know, that is where I'm now settling in at as, you know, in my 40s. Like, right. There was a future that, you know, I now, I I guess on the opposite spectrum, I guess I'm now giving myself or giving myself permission to grieve (laughs) that I didn't think of, if that's making sense. No, it is. Yeah. And so um, let me just say that. I love that you shared that and you were so great with the way that you um, communicated that with us. So. I feel like the next question is just like, so how, how, how were you able to do that? I really, it's a day by day thing. And I think like we talk about it and people say it all the time, like grief is a process, but it really is a process. And I mean, there's, like you said, there's things that come up all the time because basically it's the past that you miss and it's the future that you'll never have. And seeing it you know, with other people and then Father's Day is years after years. And then, you know, I got married without him, you know, and I graduated with my master's without like all these things that happened. And it's just a process that's daily, but I also gave myself permission to feel that. I gave myself permission to feel sad and to long for that and knowing that it's okay. And even, you know, I'm also comfortable. I learned how to be comfortable talking about it. Talking about it with my sister, we share funny stories. You know, I, I post pictures. Um, you know, I hang around, um, you know, his family and, you know, I just reminisce and, and it really, but it's a day by day journey. And I, I was in therapy uh, for a while trying to just put the pieces together and uh, realizing that I could honor his memory daily through me and then our sister. So it, it's been hard. It's definitely hard. And grief, I feel like never goes away. Um, mm-hmm. but I like the fact that I have his memory and I can, I can carry that with, and, I, and he's, you know, with me, he's in me, like he's a part of me. Mm-hmm. I'm carrying on that legacy and that, that alone keeps me going. That legacy part, like I'm fulfilling everything that he couldn't do. I want to do that. So, yeah, I love that. So while you were talking, I always say like, my goal is to be able to be like, it is well with my soul. Yes. Then, but like, when I think about that, like my soul can hurt my soul yes. can ache like how do I make it well with my soul like how right. how is that and I love like what you were sharing and and I had to learn this a few years ago is it's so possible to have conflicting feelings at the same time yes. like to to be like in grief yeah. and in pain but also in love and in honoring, like yeah. at the same time. And I, for so long, I felt like, no, I only supposed to have like one feeling. Like right. to be feeling now that I'm feeling both things at the same time. And I think it's such a powerful thing 
to create space for you to be able to do that within yourself. Um, and so one of the things that I, and let me say, it is also, when I say create space, it is also like intentional, so for like sure. make room for you to feel the way that you feel. I'm still working on that because as I'm talking now, I'm thinking, I'm like, I have said that there, I want to be able to honor my father. I remember when my therapist has said to me, when I told her, you know, how he had passed and she was like, oh, like, do you guys do anything to like, to like honor him or to like celebrate him? And I'm like, I've never even been to his grave. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So it was like in a whole nother state. And now right. I live in the state. Yeah. So it, it, I was just like, wow, actually, no, like I've done nothing, you know? And so that was something that I'm like, I'm going to get him a new tombstone because he doesn't really have one. And like, yeah. you know, it's just different promises that like I'm making to myself as a way to continue to honor, to honor him. And so I think it's so important because when we talk about soul care, I think a lot of in self-care, a lot of times people think, um, like, what are you doing to make yourself feel good? Like, what are you doing? Like, to make right. yourself feel good? But what are you doing to honor the areas that you might experience um, pain? Okay. You know, to honor the areas that may not feel so great because they are important too. They are. They are. And you have to find your peace. I mean, I struggled for years trying to find the peace around it, right? I'm a, I'm a questioner. So I'm like, why did this happen? How could this happen? Like, you know, all these things, and I struggle, and I still sometimes do, with finding the peace and the resolution of it all. Knowing mm. that God is in full control. Knowing that he's going to take care of us. Knowing that there was a part of my father that was tired, you know, and having to accept that so long, you know, for so often we hold on to people, and we don't realize the life struggles that they've been through. And But I had to accept that, too. My father's decision to, like, you know what? You know, I'm tired. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, What's going on? You have to be here for me. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that he had his own journey. And so I have to sit this hard, like you said, to for your soul sometimes to be well. And so I learned that through through God. That's the only the only way to find that I found peace in that. Finding peace in and being okay with I it's okay that I have the questions, but I have to settle my soul. I can't mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. walking around soul sick because I'm just going to project that on everyone else and in my marriage and in my relationships I had to find peace peace that God knew what's what what was best and that he was still going to take care of us and you know and, and and it's a difficult journey but you can get there with like you said the right tools and you got to seek after it you got to you got to pursue peace and I'm taking that word soul sick girl yeah, yeah. soul sick yeah. that puts it in a whole nother like a whole nother way of thinking about it. Like, if, and if something, if we don't feel good, if we are sick, what are we going to do? Right. We're going to go get the the medicine. We're going to go get the remedy. Are we going to crawl up in somebody's arms, ask them to take care of us, right? right. <laughs> we're going <laughs> to, we're, we, we don't want that feeling, no. you know? And, and we're going to work to not have that feeling. Yeah. And so I think we should do the same, you know, for our soul as well. So I love to hear, um, Maybe some specific strategies that you kind of used or things that you felt was like most effective for you as you were um, bringing healing to that area of you. Sure. Yeah. I learned to find um, different hobbies and things that I like to do. So, of course, I find myself, I, I love to sing, and I found myself writing music and singing songs. I literally put, so the reason why I took my Christmas EP together was because Christmas was such a, a humdrum time after he died. And I'm like, what is the point? Like, why do people celebrate Christmas when, he, to me, it only reminds me of, of that? So I'm like, no, let's change the narrative. Let me bring together, like, these songs that I've always sung that bring me joy, that remind me of the Jesus and the sacrifice and, and all that. Um, See, has definitely been something that's helped me heal. It connects me to God. It's, it reminds me of his goodness and it reminds me of, you know, his sovereignty. And, um, and so that definitely, and then also I, you know, I love, a, I'm a retail therapy kind of Gerald too, but in like the bargain way, like I'm not gonna like 
spend the money like that. But I just love the experience of going in this store and like looking through things. And I might not buy anything, but I just love like the looking for putting things together and putting pieces together. And just so I'm learning a few things. I got into skincare recently. I'm always, I'm a girly girl, so I love makeup and hair and lashes and this and that. So I found, I found, you know, peace in in some of those things and just doing things that I like to do, discovering more about me and then, you know, executing that. So those are kind of where, where I'm at too. I love it. It sounds like, um, as you were talking about some of the things that you're doing, it sounds like you're, you're also finding joy in living because the spaces are really they make me feel like good, but like also peaceful. Also like, I'm trying to like find the right word that like brings <laughs> all those things like hopeful and yeah. then just like, um, but like this, this exp- exploration, you yeah. know, type thing. And I feel like that's such a great way. It's almost like living. So that's a great mm-hmm. way to honor, um, to honor him. And so, all right. So at this stage, I normally kind of like ask a question about, about uh, or I kind of share about like practical tips and things for okay. folks that they can like implement in their everyday living so that they can create these spaces of peace. Because I think that mm-hmm. it's so important, right? But I feel like, like, I know what I'm going to share, but I feel like you are like the expert. So like, I'll share... <laughs> I don't know about that. Let me share what what I'm what you know what my tip is, but I'm okay. definitely gonna be looking forward to like your piggybacking and maybe your like practical things that you can okay. actually do. Because okay. guys, the tip, the tip that I want to share uh, for this episode is creating an environment of peace. And so, a lot of times we talk, on, especially on this podcast, we talk a lot about mm-hmm. finding things that bring you joy. And so for me, I'm just going to share something that I do, um, or before I get into what I do specifically, things that can be like candles, that can be like certain colors Mm -hmm. that produce certain things and plants and rugs and like patterns and textures and the way things make you feel, just making sure that you're um, incorporating all those things within your environment because it'll produce just like, it'll produce joy because you're in a space where you're intentionally setting the environment up for that. And so for me, I just recently, was I doing that before? I think I was tiptoeing a little bit, like in my old house, I was tiptoeing a little bit on colors. I was like, oh, I know certain colors make you feel a certain kind of way. So I would like paint my office a certain kind of way so I can like produce that color, but I wasn't really big on it. I was the kind of like, what is on sale? What is that? And what can I afford, right? Up in here, but it would just be a whole bunch of stuff or inherited stuff, something that somebody mm-hmm. was like, oh, that, I thought my mother, yeah. would that be nice for you? I'm like, I really don't want a picture of the Empire State Building. But I would no. just be throwing stuff together. Yeah. But when we moved here, I was like, you know what, especially during COVID, because it was like, we are in so much, I really need my environment to produce something for me. And so for me, my colors are like in my bedroom are like a seafoam green. Mm -hmm. because it reminds me of the shore it reminds me of just like lightness and just the softness of it it just relaxes me and so then I have like pictures of like the beach and the water and like islands around and stuff like that and so a lot of like my candles and decor all kind of go around this like sea foam yellow kind of color and I tell you when I walk in my bedroom, I feel like I'm on a vacation. Oh, we struggle right. sometimes with like when we go to other hotels. We're like, <laughs> we should just stay home, <laughs> <laughs> right? My house so smells better. Like, yeah, <laughs> like and then the smells. I have like um, aromatherapy going, and so it just feels like I'm like this is mm-hmm. this is my space. And I remember just wanting to like when I come home, I just want to be in my room. Everybody's like, where are you? Yeah. In my room, you know, yeah. in my space. And so the reason why, you know why I'm about to say that you are the professional <laughs> because you have, you create so many moments like that. And I'm like, I want, I don't even want coffee. I'm like, I want to go get me some coffee. 
It's so funny. Can you share, or I guess maybe share a little bit about like some of the things that you like post or you do. Sure. Um, maybe a little bit of the mindset behind it, but definitely like some practical tips because I don't be knowing where to get. Like I now have kind of just been like, oh, when I go into Home Goods or when I go into Hobby Lobby, and even Hobby Lobby, I've kind of like started straying away from. But um, that's the other thing before you add. I also like, you'll see, like I have words. I put a lot of words um, okay. in my house and frames so that it reminds me of things. Mm -hmm. Like it reminds me that it is well with my soul. It reminds yes. me that peace is my portion. And so I had to remind myself because, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't be telling you something different. Tough. So on to the professional. Please share with us how okay, we then. can create these spaces for ourselves. I think what I learned um, is to definitely, like, find beauty in the most mundane things. Like, I, I, I realize and you can just, there's this angle or there's a corner of a room or something that you maybe not look at and you kind of glance at. But then you're like, you know what? I can put this together and this and just... just lifts the room so i really just learned how to how to do that like the most basic things like could you sit coffee i love coffee oh and kind of so my you know whatever makes me feel good i kind of just go off of i kind of just go off of that uh i also too surround my thing myself around you know faith um i have a lot of you know scriptures and faith and this and that to build myself up and to remind myself um i just i really i i see something and it speaks to me. And I'm like, you know what? Or I hear a song and it's reminding me, like, you know what? I have to show you where my mind is at. Or this reminds me of, of God's goodness. Or this, you know, or, you know, me and me and my husband are doing this. And I want I want to show you that. Like, I want to show you the fun time we have. Like, so I really have just learned to find really beauty in the mundane things. Or I'm sitting in my office and I'm inspired. And now I need to show you this candle. And so um, I too, you know, you know I, I kind of... I to now make sure that I get things that speak to me. Um, I think right now I'm on like a color palette type thing where I like beiges and tans and nude and neutrals. And I kind of go a little bit wherever I find that. And I'm okay with waiting. Like I will wait to find the right piece to put it all together. Like even if it means like this space is empty until it makes sense for the room. And I love telling a story or you kind of get a, a theme. I'm definitely a theme type of person, so I want you to feel the theme of the room. Um, I, I like my office is more of this calmer theme where before it was like glitz, glam, sparkle. Now it's like calm and it's a peaceful and more kind of antique-ish vibe. So I'm a themer as well. So I, I just kind of go with, you know, what I'm inspired by. And I just see beauty in things that, you know, are just basic. And then let's we can elevate it to that next level. Mm, I love it. Do you think that you're seeing life because you, you were saying like in the simple things, do you think that you're seeing life or seeing things different now? Absolutely. I'm definitely in. I think, like I said, loss and grief and especially I think in the parental role makes you see things wholly different, um, makes you appreciate things different. I think I cherish my mom a lot more because I know that, you know, I've lost someone uh, I lost a parent, so now it's like, let's experience this. Let's do this. I want to take you here. I want to take you there. Um, so for sure, definitely grief and loss um, has made me live differently and more intentionally. And every moment counts. And even when I don't feel like that, you've got to be patient with yourself and know that you're going to get over it. You're going to get through it. And these are the things that make me feel better and help me put all the pieces together and, and help me keep that peace that piece going but I, yeah I definitely would agree yeah I love I feel like you do a really good job of keeping us present mm -hmm. That's yeah good. I like because I think about like when you're like looking out of your balcony and even with like saying like Saturday like <laughs> that is important you know what I'm saying because it's like it's it's in this moment like this is what's happening this is what what is happening in this moment and I'm present for this moment you know mm -hmm. even if it's my coffee like yeah. one day like this is and like the little shapes that be in the <laughs> I love it oh, I'm, I'm, and I feel like now like even just in talking to you I feel like Holy Spirit is just like like helping me understand like what you know what is happening and I, I think it's um such a gift to be able to bring people to like a mindfulness and a, a present 
space where it even like opens the door like what can I see around me right like what this is like even I, and, and it's funny to your theme part because I remember when you were doing like the Starbucks um containers yeah. with the, I gotta go get me a blade <laughs> Yeah, it's so funny. And so I, I I thank you for that. I think that I don't even know if you realize like how much of a gift it is. And I also feel like it's a gift too that you're that you have gained um yeah. through the loss, right? Um and I won't even dare say like a gift that your dad has given you, right? And that you are able to express to other people. And so um I love that in the eucalyptus, I'm still I know. Did you get yours yet? No, no, but I'm going to go yes. soon because I I have to have that whole thing. Now, I'm not going to yes. record it, but, I'm <laughs> it, but I am going to have it up in the shower. So I love that. I love that. And so I want to encourage everybody to definitely check out um, your Instagram and um, the things that you're doing uh, to be able to stay connected and to be reminded of those things. And so I'd love for you to share how people can connect with you. Sure. Yeah. Follow me on Instagram. It's Daniela B. Young. On Facebook, it's Daniela Vincent Young. And yeah, check out my music. I'm on Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon Music, Anywhere Music Sold. There's a link in my bio. Um, but yeah, stay connected. Message me, DM me. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you like it. Uh, let me know, you know, what, what your thoughts are. I think it's so encouraging to hear you say these things because sometimes like I said before like sometimes you feel like nothing it doesn't really matter and why you're putting all this stuff out there but it's encouraging me here that it touches you in in a, in a different way and you're getting what I'm saying I think sometimes the messages get lost in translation but I'm glad that the spirit in which I am putting it out there you're receiving and that people are receiving so I appreciate the encouragement because it makes me feel like I can keep on going <laughs> for the longer. You got the eye for Thank it. You. And like, it's it's difficult, I think, to create a mood and a vibe. Like some of it is video, but a lot of it is still pictures. So it's like difficult to be able to capture it. And then with your musicality, you probably got the right music with it and like all the things. And so I definitely encourage you guys, you want to lift your spirits, be reminded, come back to come back to the present definitely um stay connected with Daniela with her music and all the different things that she has going on and so I thank you for sharing with us and so for everybody you guys know um here at Blessed Girl Summer we always want to remind you that the the best gift that you can give yourself is to be intentional about securing your peace and so these are different ways that you can do that. We have to create these spaces for ourselves. And remember that you have the ability to make any season in your life a blessed girl summer season. It's all about your mindset and toppled with action, right? That can get you to the place that you want to be. So guys, until next time, please be well and remain at peace. Talk to you later.